welcome back garden friends. This was a super busy week on the cut flower farm so I thought I would do kind of like a week on the flower farm. I got all of my dally tubers planted. I got tons of things harvested. I made tons of bouquets for the farmers market. I got my wildflower patch tilled and prepped and the seeds planted and just so much more. So I would love if you would take this moment to just sit back and relax with a cup of coffee or your favorite drink and see what has been up this week on my little flower farm. So for starters here, you can see that I am harvesting my snapdragons. They are in full, complete bloom right now, and I am absolutely loving it. I decreased the number of varieties of snapdragons I grew this year and just grew a lot more of those favorites like Potomac Lavender that I grew last year, and I'm so glad I did. You are a fast worker, man. Yep. Say, get off me, B. I think you're faster than mommy. I couldn't help but include this clip of my son. He's always wanting to help cut flowers. It's so cute. But as you can see here, this was my ranunculus as it was kind of fizzling out. And then here are some clips of when it was in its full, beautiful glory. I was so happy with the ranunculus this year. I already cannot wait until next ranunculus season. I've already ordered all of my corms to start for this fall. And I do have a video of how I started these if you'd like to check that out. Now we move on to two of my vegetable beds. I do finally have two more raised beds built. Since deciding to start a cut flower farm, the vegetable beds have been put on the back burner, but because of prices and everything going on in the world right now, it has been number one priority to get the other six beds built. For early spring I had some carrots and a few other spring crops in here uh, right now I just have some carrots and chamomile in here and then a few things had self seeded now that I got all of those things that I didn't want in here pulled out I'm gonna be planting potatoes in the center and then bush beans all around the perimeter I'm also going to be planting a few of my cherry tomatoes over here, but most of my tomatoes I have growing in another location uh, behind my pole barn, and I have about 25 tomato plants over there. And then in this bed over here, along with a couple cherry tomatoes and the bush beans, I also have some peppers that will be going over here. Now we move on to what I am most excited about, and that is my wildflower patch. Now I have wanted to plant a wildflower patch for as long as I can remember, way back when I very first started gardening. But even more so after I seen Nicole at Flower Hill Farms video of her wildflower patch. Now it's time for the big mama package. So excited. I just can't find it. Look at that beautifulness. Now I do plan on filming an additional video going into more details on the wildflower patch. So if you're interested in that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. But the last thing I just wanted to touch on is where I got the seeds. I purchased these seeds from uh, American Meadows and they have a ton of selection for wildflower mixes but I went ahead and went with the spring into summer mix because I liked the uh, varieties that came in it 
They had a lot of varieties that I could also use for cut flower bouquets if I needed to, like Cosmos and Zinnias and things like that. And it just had a great selection of native things that are good for the pollinators as well. Good job, Sally. Right there. Good job. What are you doing? Oh, come get you? Oh, yeah? Just hold on to that. Okay. Boy, you tricked me. Oh, whoa, you okay? Can't believe you painted all over your back. Silly. <laughs> Now we move on to my mess of a porch. <laughs> All season I've just been adding seed trays that I didn't need the rest of the seedlings and I just need to empty them out into the compost and just filling this porch up with all kinds of odds and ends. So today I am tackling that and then I'm also getting this green stalk finished, filled up, and planted up with all of my bare root strawberries. I already have a few things like some little lavender seedling and then my son as you could see helped me plant his Tiny Tim tomatoes. My dad's name was Tim and he passed away when I was nine so I like to try to find things that um, honor him and my grandma as well as my uncle my uncle, his name was Kermit, so as you can see, we have lots of little frogs and things in the garden as well. For some reason, in that uh, little stand planter, the strawberries didn't make it. I don't know if it dried out too much over the winter or what happened, uh, but I am replacing all of those strawberries with new bare root strawberries, and as well as planting of uh, them in the green stalk. Now one little tip that I wanted to give you if you are new to planting bare root strawberries is the little like it feels like a stem uh, coming off of the bare root and what that is is it's basically the part that used to be connected to the mother plant and what I do since you have that new fresh growth coming off the top sometimes not always uh, if your bare root strawberries don't have any fresh growth then you know it's no reason to worry uh, but what I do is I leave that on there and I use that to hold on to so that I don't have to hold on to the crown or that fresh green growth because it's usually pretty fragile now one of the main reasons I'm growing so many more this year is because my son loves them he loves every morning going out and checking to see if there's any new fresh ripe strawberries on my plants. So I have these faux wooden barrel planters. I'm, I'm gonna place three of them by my son's little play area at the back of our property. And hopefully that will give him plenty to snack on while he's outside playing. Now here is the green stalk all planted up with the bare root strawberries. This is actually a couple days later and you can see that they have some nice big healthy dark green leaves on them now and this green stalk this is my first year growing in a green stalk and I absolutely love it. It took me a couple years to purchase it because it is so expensive even if you have a coupon but I definitely definitely feel it is worth it. I also have a coupon code if you're interested in getting one yourself. I believe you get 10% off. Next, I just wanted to show you some of the things that I'm harvesting out of the cut flower garden right now uh, that I've been using for my market bouquets. I am hoping to do a series of videos for how to harvest each flower. Uh, like just doing a quick short little video like how to harvest snapdragons for the best base life, how to harvest zinnias, and so on. So let me know in the comments 
what are some of the flowers that you struggle with uh, knowing the right time to harvest and I will try to start out with those first I don't always wrap my market bouquets but this week I had uh, taken the extra time to do so so here you see that I'm just cutting them all the same size for my $10 bouquets and you can see I'm wrapping one of my bunches that have a lot of the ranunculus and then here are some of the other bouquets I made this week now last but certainly not least I finally got my dahlia tubers planted I don't usually invest a ton in things like dahlias because they don't have the longest vase life but I do always like to add a couple flowers like dahlias that may not have the best vase life but they're just so beautiful that they're still worth putting one or two in a bouquet and just letting the customer know hey this isn't going to last as long as the other flowers so when this one is done just go ahead and take it out and then enjoy the rest of the bouquet but I'm super excited about the dahlias that I purchased this season. I can't wait to see what they look like in real life. In addition to the dahlia tubers, I also am growing some dahlias from seed. I think I have about 14 dahlias that I grew from seed this year that I planted a couple weeks ago, and I'm super excited to see what those look like also. As you can see, from the lighting slowly fading away it took me quite a while to get all of these tubers in the ground if you would like a more detailed video on exactly how i planted my dahlia tubers then let me know in the comments now as i'm sure you've all noticed we have reached the end of the video make sure if you enjoyed this video and you're interested in seeing how i started my ranunculus corms to get those gorgeous blooms that you check out this video here and if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you can see my videos in the future and a huge thank you to all of you loyal subscribers that are subscribed and always watch my videos i sincerely appreciate it I'm coming up on my two year anniversary of making YouTube videos and I've still not yet reached the milestones necessary to become monetized. And I would be lying if I didn't say that it didn't make it hard sometimes. Although I didn't start my channel for the money, it can be very discouraging and very hard to stay motivated to spend, you know, 20, 30, 40 hours a week on something that you're not getting paid for especially when you have so many other things to do. But seeing your comments and knowing that I am helping you guys to grow things that you want to grow and encouraging you to try more things and just being able to build relationships with all of you beautiful people that I wouldn't know otherwise is what keeps me motivated and keeps me doing this. So again, a huge thank you to all of you loyal subscribers. But that is going to be it for this video. Thanks again, and I will talk to you in the next one.